I'm afraid to disappoint my parents. Okay. Because they have given me everything. You're f***ing yourself over and your family. It was worse for my family because then I resented them. And there's a part of you that resents your parents right now because you don't want to disappoint them and you're not living in your truth so that you can appease them. What? Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button to become a part of my downline. <laughs> I think I'm gonna start calling people my downline from now on. It just feels right. So we're gonna be watching a team call today. This is a Team Beachbody call. You know, they seem to love to post their team calls on YouTube, don't know why. Anyway, this features the henchmen from my other video that I made a couple of months ago that went crazy. So in the original video, we watched the henchmen and her upline pretty much berate their entire downline of close to 100 people for an hour. Okay, about inviting people, how they're not working hard enough, how they're not inviting enough. I have come to the conclusion based on numbers, based on strong facts, based on strong results, that nobody's actually doing the work. And they said things like, if your dog is sick at the vet, you need to be at the vet inviting people. It's exhausting to me to have to get a message saying, well, my dog was sick and I had to, I don't care. You should have been sending invites from the fucking vet. So it was very shocking, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. You should probably watch that one first because it gives you a lot of insight on this person who's leading the call today. But this is a very shocking one. So she was asked to guest speak, I believe, on another team's call. And what's interesting about it for me, besides the crazy things that she's about to say in this video, are actually the people who are on the call with her. I'm actually gonna blur out their faces because I feel so sorry. I want these people to kind of remain anonymous in perpetuity here. So the, the people that are in her downline of this particular team are a great indicator of the kind of people who are sucked into these pyramid schemes. So anyway, let's just get into this video and see what's going on. Welcome to your Tuesday night team call. Thank you for everybody who could join us. We do have a bunch of people who work. Um, we have a lot of nurses and things on our team and bartenders, so they are currently working and we'll catch the recording. Oh. Um, no announcements tonight. We're going to dive right into it because I'm super excited to hear her talk. Um, I love this girl i'm not going to give away too much because she's going to tell you her epicness and it just radiates off of her and i think that <laughs> one reason it does stop don't act like it don't but one reason why i love her is that she just is so unapologetically herself to the point where it's like everyone should be looking up to her and just 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 marveling at the fact that she's so real and honest and open and I'm embarrassing her, which is equally awesome. So <laughs> I am a uh, one star, I'm in one star qualification right now, beach body coach. Um, I am at, if you guys wanna go see, let me just give you a little disclaimer. There's a lot of like nudity and implied nudity on that page. So if that offends you, probably not the page for you. <laughs> um, okay. If that offends you, I'm probably not the person for you. And that's okay, right? Like that's totally fine. And so. What I want to share is I want to thank you first for it, for like asking me to even do this because this business is literally going to change your life if it hasn't already. And it will continue to change your life in different ways. So for those that don't follow me or don't know anything about my story, I'm 34 years old. I got sober when I was 19. I did not get sober by a choice. Um, I am an ex prostitute and beach body was my way out of all of my past. So I, got sober because I have a gnarly criminal record and I'm just kind of a gnarly human, but I, and I still am like, I'm not going to lie. Like even in sobriety, I'm just kind of a crazy person, but I, um, gnarly criminal record, gnarly person and still am. Okay. <laughs> Definitely going to need to hear more. <laughs> Look, everybody's got a story. Okay. Everybody's got a past. Everybody's done things that they wish they didn't do. That's totally fine. As long as you don't go on to scam people in a pyramid scheme, but what all I hear really when she tells this story, because it's obviously like this very traumatic past and, you know, obviously was not on a good path and whatever. All I hear is someone recruited her when she was extremely vulnerable, susceptible, pregnable, all of these different things that make people susceptible to being pulled in by these pyramid schemes. So 
I've said this before, I'll say it again. Nobody joins a pyramid scheme when life's good, right? When life's going great, you're making money, you're great career, great relationships, great family, everything like that. Nobody's joining those really during that time, okay? Um, something's missing and people usually join these to fill some sort of void. I want you to keep that in mind as we go throughout this video because it's going to be a huge topic later on. And I really thought it was bullshit. I was the person that hated on MLMs. I was the person that talked shit to my friends that did multi-level marketing because I was like, oh, you're going to go and like be a network marketer and be all positive and read self-help books and like, yeah, eat a dick. Like I just wasn't into it because I was like, what is the point of this? Like go to... I always hear this. I just want to mention this. I constantly hear this as like this very weird pitch from people who are now in network marketing saying they were the biggest MLM hater or they were the biggest skeptic in the world and it's like there's no way that you were the biggest skeptic or biggest MLM hater okay I hate MLMs genuinely through and through okay I'm not joining one anytime soon and I'm never going to so you weren't a huge hater or a huge skeptic to begin with if you did that because if you truly were a big skeptic, you would have looked through these things. Income disclosure statements are available for virtually every company at this point now. Um, and you'd be able to discern for yourself, hey, I'm actually gonna make probably 10 bucks a week. <laughs> so um, I have a lot of autoimmune illness. I have rheumatoid arthritis, I have chronic fatigue. I have a lot of different diagnosis, mental health diagnosis. I'm not gonna go through the whole rap sheet because it doesn't matter. Um, because every day people are gonna message you saying that the reason they can't do what we do is because they have whatever the illness is right and i'm lucky that i get to be like cool story bro i have that illness too <laughs> and look at me i'm doing it right so the advantage is if you don't have that illness you get to tell those people hey i know a coach that has that illness and she rocks it so once again we're seeing this common thread here where they like to prey on people who have autoimmune issues, diseases, variations of ailments and things like that. I find it to be absolutely abhorrent personally. If you get it down to the brass tacks and really look at the facts of what's going on, it actually makes it much worse because they're not only recruiting people who it's almost certain to not change your life in a positive way. It's probably gonna change your life actually, in fact, in a negative way. Um, but you're recruiting these people who probably need money for different hospital bills or whatever it is, or quality of life things that they could be paying for, and you're scamming them out of money. And you're scamming them out of time. And, and once again, vulnerable people that are looking for answers and would do anything to be healthy again. And here you are saying, hey, come on in. <laughs> is what I want to talk about on this call because if Beachbody is your plan B you will not be successful in this business and I don't mean as a hobby I mean at all like if this business is not a priority for you you won't be successful and it's okay like I'm here to tell you tonight like sorry Britt but like if this is not a priority for you that's okay I had to tell a coach today like this is not for you and that's okay or this is just part-time for you and that's okay but if you hate your job if you want something else if you want a little bit of extra money, right? Like this is where it's at, right? Like I made $900 and I hate talking about money and I like want to throw up in my mouth just saying these numbers, but I'm going to do it because I'm showing you, I'm showing you that you can walk through fear and it's okay. Like my butthole is clenched so tight right now, guys, like listen to me, but I made $960 and it was my highest paycheck and I was floating on the middle of the fucking Pacific ocean on a cruise ship on a free trip that I got to go on for helping people. So I say that because I want you to see the magnitude of this. Uh, okay, here's something I just want to point out. I've, I've made this point before, but I'm going to make it again for people who maybe didn't hear that one. There's this kind of dichotomy that presents itself a lot of the time with these people. So it's either that you can work this business in pockets of time, which I hear constantly. She kind of just contradicted herself in saying this, actually in the past thing that she just said. But she, either you work it in pockets of time and you're like, all right, you know, this is my side hustle, right? You hear that a ton. But then she also said, if you're not going to go all in in this, you're not going to be successful. So it's like, which is it, right? And when you're in here, like these people who have already said yes to the opportunity, then you start to hear, you got to go all in or you're not successful. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's great. The best thing in the world is watching a coach come to me and say, I can't do this. I have a full-time job. And I'm like, okay, so let's go through your day. So if you're not a tracker, you need to track though, the time in the beginning. So I realized that 
most of my time is on the toilet. My time in a day, I mean, because I have Crohn's. And so if I'm on the toilet, there is literally no reason that I can't be following people, talking to those people, inviting those people, following up with those people. I bring my laptop onto the toilet with me and do my asana, which is my, um, my follow-ups. Like you have to leverage your strength. So whatever that is and going all in means leveraging the things that make you uncomfortable because your strength, as much as it sucks for me to deliver this news to you guys, um, your strength is the thing that makes you the most uncomfortable. And I rope people in that way because I want them to hear me and see me. If you're one of those people, sorry to call you out. If you're one of those people that looks at your phone and goes, so I just finished my workout and it was 20 minutes. Who in the actual fuck is going to want to sign up with you? I'm just, I, I'm being totally honest. If you are not vivacious and excited, and I don't care if you have to take 17 scoops of pre-workout to get yourself there, figure it out. Like people are not going to want to follow you or watch what you have going on if you're fucking boring. And like, I'm not saying that you're boring. I'm saying you're lazy because that's what it is. No one is boring. There is no one on earth. I really... I don't believe, and I studied people for a very long time, um, and I worked with deviants, and I worked with nonviolent drug offenders, and I worked with some of the worst people on earth too. And guys, I'm telling you, there's not a human on earth that's boring. I'm sorry, I just have to make a comment here. First of all, I can tell you with certainty there are people who are boring. <laughs> but she's like, I've worked with deviants and ex-drug addicts and criminals, and it's like, I can tell you, no one's boring. It's like, uh, yeah, you're talking to criminals. They're not, they're like the least boring people on earth. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I don't know where she's going with this, but continue. But there's plenty of lazy ass people that don't want to put in the work to create a better life. And if you don't create a better life for yourself, you cannot sell a better life to somebody else. <laughs> And that's what you have to see. So it all starts and ends with you. Showing up every day. Being consistent. All right. So I just skipped a, a, ahead because a lot of it was boring. But here she's going to talk about the priming thing again. So if you watch the first video, which obviously I recommend watching before that, this, uh, she's going to do that thing again where they do like a warm up, like pump up session, you know, where they remember when we were like <laughs> last time. Uh, and I'm, you know still feel like I should never have done that on the internet, but uh, she's talking about it right now, so. Tony Robbins taught me this at Unleash the Power Within, which is a seminar that I went to, and it's called Priming, and I do it every single morning, and I'm gonna take you guys through it. And I have done this shit in a gnarly, busy Starbucks before. I've done it in a Big Lots. I've done it in a gas station bathroom when we were driving across country. So you can do this shit anywhere. I have coaches when I do this. They call me the hype master for, for this exactly, okay? I have had coaches do this with a baby in their fucking arms. There's no reason you can't do it, okay? So you're going to stand up. I'm going to count you in for 10, and I'm going to explain what you're going to do. It's going to be awkward. If you want to keep your eyes open, you can. I suggest the first time you close your eyes. If you cry, let me stop really quick. That is okay. Most of my coaches cry the first time because it's awkward, and you've never actually made yourself feel grateful for fucking anything. And what one of them messaged me afterwards was, oh, my God, I didn't realize what a miserable, ungrateful cunt that I was. And I was like, it's okay, this is where we do better. When you know better, you do better, okay? Hands up, you're gonna breathe in, and you're gonna, ready, go. Hands down, palms up, feel a little tingle, that's okay. Take your right hand and put it over your heart. Yeah, I'm not doing any of this again, <laughs> but my favorite is this girl who's just, out, she's just laying down like, I'm not fucking doing this. <laughs> there might be some hope for some people in this call. <laughs> okay, so finally, we've gotten to the part where things are going to start heating up a little bit. So she's about to go through and ask each person on the call what's keeping them from going all in the business, okay? This is going to get dicey here. <laughs> I'm going to ask every single person on this call what is keeping them from going all in. And we're going to start with... Wait, you got to unmute yourself. Yeah. It's self-confidence. Okay. How'd you feel after priming? A lot better. It, okay. It's, what are you afraid uh, of? Something I press. Me? Mm hmm Failure. Not being able to provide for my family. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask. What happens if you fail? Yeah. Walk me through it. Okay. What do you mean walk you through it? 
walk me through it. What happens if you fail? If you do not succeed at this business, what happens? You can't feed your family? Yeah, I can't feed them. I'll end up having to get a job on the outside of the house to provide for them. It's not anything I want to go back and do again. Okay, so that's your why. That's, that is, that's what you leverage. What are you good at? Baking. <laughs> okay. Um, I feel I'm, I'm good at, <laughs> what? I wish I could bake, but <laughs> that's what I'm trying to tell you. You have skills that other people are interested in. Leverage those. Yeah. If it's baking, if the I... first thing out of your mouth is baking, then it's food. That's nutrition. Do you want to know the one thing that I get feedback on in my group that there's not enough of? It's fucking nutrition. So leverage the nutrition help your clients with nutrition. Talk about nutrition. God, it's sad. I mean, she's like choking up thinking about not being able to provide for her family. And I can pretty much guarantee that she's probably not bringing in much from this Beachbody thing. It's sad. This is sad. If I go to your page right now, am I gonna see nutrition? Yeah, that's what I like to share pictures of my food. Okay. I'm sure I annoy the hell out of people, but I love it. Okay. <laughs> it's something I'm proud of. Not your people. Yeah. You don't think that I annoy the fucking ever living shit out of people? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> not my people. <laughs> yeah. That's the confidence. The confidence is not, oh, I know that I'm amazing. It's, I don't care if you don't think I'm amazing. And I'm going to tell you right now, nobody that's doing amazing is even worried about if you're not. The only yeah. people that are focused on you failing are you. Yep. I'm learning so that slowly. Root into it. Root into that fear and walk through that every day. And know that the analysis paralysis that people get where they're like, oh my God, I'm gonna fail so I can't do anything. No, 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 no. You literally will fail if you do nothing. Yeah. It's impossible to fail if you show up every day and you share in an open way about the things that you're going through. Okay. Is that boo? What was the question? What's keeping <laughs> you from going all in? And what are you afraid of? What's the first question? What's keeping you from going all in? This is the one where it's really all in. Um. Wait, she's frozen. What happened? Okay, what did you say, Mama? Uh, my emotional creature. <laughs> what happened, Mama? Dude, it's okay to cry. I cried on every fucking call for the first year. Seriously, up until very recently, and I'm a crier, so you talk to me, girl. What's going on? Um, I'm afraid to disappoint my parents. Okay. Because they have given me everything, including the job I have now. At the moment, I took it my parents and everyone that was there since I was little told me they were so proud of me for getting a grown-up job and for finally joining the workforce. I love that. Obviously I'm blurring her face out but I just want to let you know I mean this girl is like she she looks very young to me I mean, I'm sure she's older than this, but she honestly looks like she's like 18 years old. And I think she's even sitting in like her childhood room. I mean, it's like, this is so sad. So she just said, if you, maybe if you didn't hear, she was kind of had some uh, internet lag issues, but she said that she's afraid to disappoint her parents. They've given her everything and including the job she has now, and they're so proud of her and they're excited that she got this job that they helped her get and she joined the workforce and everybody that's ever wanted her to succeed. They're so excited and happy to see her at this job and it's just like, this is sad. So I'm hoping that the next words that come out of her mouth, the speaker on this call, I'm hoping that the words are not quit said job okay i'm just scared that okay if i stop the work at this job 
that they won't be proud of me anymore. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something. I'm fucking proud of you because you just shared some vulnerable ass shit on this call with a complete stranger. So you're doing something right in life, okay? Your parents are going to be proud of you if you live your dreams and you're happy. That's when your parents will be proud of you. And then here's the other thing, though. There's a difference between being proud of somebody and watching someone struggle. I do not believe in my heart of hearts that your parents want you to be miserable. Okay. Well, she uh, pretty much told her to quit her job as we were hoping she wouldn't, and she did it. So are any of us surprised? No. Um, okay, so let me just say something right here. And I see this nonstop. It's a, it's a big point that I want to make. So first of all, yes, she just said, well, your parents don't want to see you miserable and they're going to be proud of you if you live your dreams. Okay. Being a beach body coach in a pyramid scheme, you might think that this life of luxury that they portray is your dream life and maybe it is, but that's not the reality in any sense of the word, okay? The reality is that you are signing yourself up to be on your phone 24 seven, to have toxic relationships with other people, to potentially ruin the relationships that you already have that are pre-existing with your friends, your family. That's just how I see it shake out time and time again. I mean, I get a thousand emails a day. So the next thing though that she says is, your parents don't wanna see you struggling and they don't wanna see you miserable. But at no point did she say that the job she's working at now her grown up job, real job, is making her miserable. She just assumed that, okay? It's conjecture. That's a problem within the MLM space that you're gonna see is they just assume everybody who's working a traditional job or whatever is automatically miserable at their job. And for some people, they signed up for Beachbody or they signed up for an MLM because they thought it was going to be, as we've talked about before, oh, I get to work this in pockets of time or I can make a little bit of extra gas money or grocery money or whatever. It doesn't mean that they're miserable at their job. This is so disappointing to hear the advice coming out of her mouth is, well, they want you to live your dream, so you should probably go all in and beach body. A surefire way to disappoint your parents is to join a pyramid scheme where you're almost certain to lose money. Okay? and quit your other job or whatever it is that she's kind of insinuating that you would do. But I think it's important that we watch something like this as, as awful as it is and as sad as it is, but to see the kind of people who are in these pyramid schemes. This is somebody who's so upset. You know, making your parents proud is something that's obviously very important to her. It weighs on her. You can tell that this is something that's been compounding over many, many days and over probably a lifetime even, the way that she kind of presented it to the call. But it's sad to see people that are so susceptible to these things and so vulnerable. And that's the kind of people that are in these pyramid schemes. If the job makes you miserable and you stay in it to keep your family happy, you're fucking yourself over and your family. It was worse for my family because then I resented them. And there's a part of you that resents your parents right now because you don't want to disappoint them and you're not living in your truth so that you can appease them. What? What? I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you. Okay. I was very, very, very disappointed with her saying to quit her job and to, you know, to live her dreams and be a beach body coach. I mean, Jesus Christ. But then to say there's a part of you that resents your parents. This girl, this is the way I perceived it, has a good relationship with her parents. They helped her get a job. They're telling her how proud they are. Do you know how many people's parents don't tell them how proud they are and don't try to help them get a job and are, they're like, F you, you're on your own. Everything she said has illustrated that her family and her are close. She wants to please them and she wants them to be proud of her and she wants this great relationship and then there's somebody who's telling her that there's a part of you that actually resents your parents and is causing this this problem i mean there's a reason why mlms destroy relationships time and time again it's because of people like this it's because people's uplines are like oh actually no oh you actually just said you have a really great relationship with your parents and the worst thing that could ever happen to you was you disappointing them and them not being proud of you and you losing their support Oh yeah, you actually hate your parents. Did you know that? Because <laughs> I knew that. Because I don't know you, but I know that. It's like, God, you guys, <sighs> this stuff happens a lot on Team Calls, okay? This is not the first time I've seen it, and it's so disappointing. And for somebody, once again, who's so susceptible, so pregnable to hearing these things, they're like, wait a minute, do I actually hate my parents? And are they doing this to me? That might actually get through.
you got to do for you, mama. Your family is going to support you. And if they don't, that's okay. <sighs> okay. Cause we're here and we support you. Oh, if they don't, Oh God. Oh, thank God. Oh, if your family who, by the way, you said that was the worst thing that could happen is if your family doesn't support you. Don't worry guys. We're here for you though. Your Beachbody family who, by the way, if you left Beachbody tomorrow, we wouldn't be there anymore because you're not helping us financially anymore. Stop this, okay? Stop this. Um, so I guess what's keeping me from going all in, kind of similar to what she said about, I, I grew up in a family where um, this online crap, it's not a job. And so I, I get it from my husband. I, you know, like the support, he's like, you need, you know, if I don't bring the money, I have a part-time job outside of this, but he's like, you need to get you a real job. You know? <laughs> but basically, I guess that's what keeps me, yeah, keeps me okay. holding me back. And then I guess, you know, feel of, uh, fearing to fail and um, not knowing as much as like other people do. But that's, um, I've been working on personal development and that has helped me tremendously. And I didn't ever think I would be the one to do that. I just kind of like what you thought that it was bull crap. But, oh yeah. But I just got this new planner, and I don't know if y'all if you've heard about it. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. So I'm excited about doing that. that. Hold on. I just want to see. Oh, for God's sake! The planner that she got is made by another Beachbody coach that's in the network. There's a book called the 10x Rule, and it shows you that like how you do things times 10. And so if you are messaging, like there are nights where I have insomnia. So I leverage that. Like when I'm laying in bed and I'm like hitting my vape and I can't sleep, I'm like, cool, I'm going to go follow 600 people. And then whoever follows me back, I'm going to message all those people and invite them. That's why I hit success club numbers. It's not because I have secret sauce. It's because I do the things times 10. And then there's something called the compound effect. And that is something that you can tell your spouse about. Because my spouse also is like, I support you, but like, <laughs> really? <laughs> right? Like, he's like, okay, sure. Uh, and that's okay. Like, we don't need, you don't think that I'm scared to disappoint my fucking family and my spouse because it's like, cool, I went to college and I did all this shit and now I'm like in network marketing. But I realized like, I can't live for other people. Like, your life is not yours if you're constantly worrying about what other people think about it, especially family. Because family are going to be the gnarliest, right? Family are going to be the harshest critics with you. But you have to remember too, family is used to you being a certain way. Your husband is used to you being a certain way. And the second you start to change, it's like, oh, now you're like in this business and it's changing you. You just got to run with it though, because it's changing you for the better. I'm going to be kind of backwards of everybody. I like that. Rebel, what's up, girl? <laughs> so my family is extremely supportive, but my senior year of high school, I was bullied really bad. Um, like my mom was like afraid I was going to kill myself. And I still live in the same town that I went to school that all the bullies are. And I'm still on social media with all my bullies and I'm afraid of what they think. And it's like, if I fail, then I'm just proving them right. So mm -hmm. why am I not all in? And it's just, I was tormented so bad when I was in high school, not high school, my senior year. And they were like, I always had a dream of being a life flight nurse. And I, they would just torment like me and tell me how dumb I was and that I would never be there. And it's like, I'm so afraid of what they think of me now, but it's like, if I fail, then I'm proving them right. So why am I not going all in to prove them wrong? Because I'm so afraid I'm going to get emotional. I'm so okay. afraid of voices that haunted me and still haunt me 10 years later. Can I tell you something? And I lack self-confidence because That's I wasn't 100 pounds overweight. I'm now 50 pounds overweight. And I know what it feels like to have been thin. I mean, I know what it feels like to have been an athlete and have quick feet and be able to put a pair of jeans on and not have saggy skin or... PCOS that drags me down and it's like I just cannot find my confidence anywhere. I think every person on this call has said I have no self-confidence. It's like breaks my heart to see somebody who's 
still tormented by things that happened 10 years ago in high school and by the voices in her head that other people said and I just want it to be very extra clear because that's the theme of this video that I want you to take away from it is these are like the stories that you don't even really hear about because they leave these MLMs and they feel even worse than they did before they even joined them because they went through like this trauma of not only did I not make any money, I completely failed. I let my parents down. I am being still tormented by my high school bullies because they just saw me fail at this thing that was set up for me to fail anyway. Like nobody's making money in these MLMs. I want everybody to know that it's not your fault if you don't make any money because most 99.9% .9 of people would not make money. It's not you. I'm so upset to see these people in this situation. It's so sad and if you were ever looking for a reason to not like MLMs or if you wonder why the hell I get on here, you know, week after week and, and make these kind of videos, it's because of people like this. I don't make them because I can't give a fuck about, you know, this henchman or whatever or like I, I feel sorry for these people. I want to help these people. I need these people to know that it's not you. This cycle of vulnerable people being taken advantage of, it has to end. All right. Who we got next? I never want to butcher someone's name. Nope, that's correct. Okay. I don't know how to work this very good, so I don't know if you can see my picture or not. I can see you. Okay. You're laying down, you chilling. Yeah. I'm lazy. Capital L. It's all good. Leverage that then. I'll show you how. Okay. <laughs> is that okay. what helps? That's what keeps you from going all in is the laziness? No. Well, no, most of it's self confidence. I don't like to be told no. Like, that's. I just oh, honey. don't like it. <laughs> I know. And, and that's the worst part of it because I know it's going to come. Like, I know it's going to come. So you have to add value so that they want to say yes. Okay. How do you add value? Um, well, I need to, well, I need to figure out my reason why. Like, Nikki yes. told me that I need to figure out my reason why. And I'm just having a hard time, like, wrapping my head around it because I feel that I'm my own worst judge, kind of, you know, like. We all are. Like, um, and I have to process. Like, I don't want to put something out there that I haven't processed numerous yeah. times. No, what you're doing is getting in your own fucking way and cop blocking yourself from success. Why? What are you afraid of? Tell me. There's something. Well. Okay, I'm the fat girl. I've always been the fat girl. And I don't, I feel extremely uncomfortable putting okay. it out there that, hey, I'm working out. Oh, I might not have lost any weight this month. Or, you know, that's the biggest issue I have. God, this is so sad. You do not have to do the fitness. I'm telling you, like, you can find and leverage your strength. And if your strength is not weight loss, then don't talk about weight loss. Talk about confidence and that you're confident in that body and if you're not confident in that body that's where you do personal development so you can gain confidence and you share that you share and it's vulnerable and awkward and you can like poop in your pants and vomit and call me and we can talk about it right before you do it but like share the fact that you are uncomfortable being bigger and that you're working on it and that's how you connect to women you know i don't feel like anybody should feel like they have to or be instructed that they have to spill like all of their innermost turmoil online in order to connect with people, right? Which is what she just was advised to do. And you see that a lot. Like there's a lot of this oversharing problem that happens within these MLMs and it's very alarming sometimes. I mean, for other people, it's entertaining to see people like overshare, but for me, I just look at it, I'm like, I'm sad for them. Like, I don't feel like anyone should have to share anything they don't want to share on social media. So the fact that they're always instructed to talk about and reveal the, the inner workings of their mind, of the doubts they have about themselves and the, the most horrible things, like those don't need to be public whatsoever. Then let me just say this as my closing argument on, on this particular point. If you can't run a business without sharing all of your insecurities online, you're not in the right business whatsoever, okay? This was the <laughs> most amazing call. And the people who are gonna watch the recording are gonna be like, fuck, I <laughs> have the opportunity to be on live because of the stupid job that I'm at right now that I hate and so expect a lot of messages, I'm sure. Um, does anybody have any questions? 
I want to do a boomerang of all of us too. Oh, this is the stuff that creates FOMO, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Any questions? It's like, what did we learn from this? Yes, she might be a good motivator to some people who are down and they're like, all right, I'm going to go and do this and do something that I don't want to do, right? But how long is that even going to last? Like, it's probably going to last a day, two days maybe. Like, there's nothing in here where these people can say, okay, I'm going to go actually make money in these things. Because the answer to how do I make money in one of these pyramid scheme things is have a ton of followers already, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers who would buy something from you, or you got in years ago. So those two things are not relevant to people who are just like living in a, their small town. You know, it's just like another useless team call pretty much. Like we didn't learn anything except, oh, I gotta stop caring about what people think. Oh, no, duh. Like that's what everybody says. This was amazing. This was absolutely wonderful. And like also guys, like it's not like, in the, okay, I've been doing this a year. He's just now starting to do the workout. Like, and it was leading by example. I wanted to say that too, because I know so many people are like, how do I get my spouse to do it? You fucking don't. Leave them alone. If you badger your spouse about this business, they're going to be like, you're not doing it. So I signed him up as a coach with his social security number and I didn't ask. So <laughs> Raina always says it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Okay. And I really mean that. So I signed him up. I'm going to do the same thing with my mom in a little bit, but like it is okay to do that because then I'm building his business. That's how I'm in one star qualification is I built his business in diamond. Okay. So it looks like she hasn't left the criminal record in her past. What that I'm sorry. That's illegal. Signed him up with his social security number and didn't tell him. And she's doing, she's planning on doing the same thing with her mom pretty soon. <laughs> Who says something that like that? That is so incriminating, but to do something like that, to have no, and, and here we are taking like relationship and life advice and business advice from someone who's signing people up without them even knowing what their social security number, I'm sorry, what is going on here? That is the worst advice. It's illegal to do something like that. What are you thinking? Saying this in a team call you know is getting uploaded. I mean, oh. So that pretty much wraps up that uh, team call. Some closing thoughts from me. <laughs> I really want the overall takeaway from this video to be on the people who shared their story in this team call and the people who, who are just looking for confidence and happiness or purpose or something to fill some certain type of void. And I don't want these kind of people who don't deserve it and who are just trying to better their lives in some way to get scammed out of money or to go through like this emotionally traumatizing thing of being in an MLM. Like I just want that to stop. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys take something away from this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you are not subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel for more anti MLM videos. And I will see you next time I see you. Bye. Every rooftop talk, every stone and kiss, every late night walk, every secret wish, every second chance, every time we dance, I'm in my feet. Street man.